this morning, announcements, our potluck dinner and council meeting after worship. Uh, all are welcome to attend. As you know, uh, any activities, even at council meetings and that is, uh, and for us, it is open, anybody to attend. And also, also any, any dinner <laughs> you want to come to, you're welcome. Uh, no Bible study today. We'll pick it up again next Sunday. Uh, Thursday evening, uh, open activity and signing. Uh, classes will begin again in January, and uh, also we'll be having an annual meeting in January, and we will be deciding uh, the day and time at council meeting today. So an annual meeting is is where presenting uh, legal church business that needs needs votes of the uh, of all the members uh, that takes place at the annual meeting. One is election of officers. There can be other things as well. So, any other announcements? The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. And as we consider this Advent season as preparing for a deeper understanding of God's plan for salvation, and this being the Christmas being the celebration of the final, final chapter in that plan, uh, and that plan of salvation will lead to what, what I just read. Because we're, we consider what our Lord has done for us. We consider the future plans that he has. <clears throat> Let us prepare ourselves then for worship. That we can, first of all, seek his forgiveness through the life, death, and resurrection of his son Jesus. That we can stand in his presence this morning to sing and pray, to give offering, to hear from his word go closer to Him, as well as have fellowship with one another. Let us pray. Lord God, we come today on the one hand with hearts full of sorrow because of what has happened in Connecticut. Yet at the same time, we continue to have a joy in our hearts when we consider who You are. And as we pray for those folks, we know that you can give them the comfort. And you can give them the strength to be able to get through this. To where the memory of the children will be a shining light to us. And not a sorrow. For we remember your promise, Lord, that We can all be together in your kingdom. And the families can be reunited. And we can celebrate with them when that happens. Indeed, Lord, we all seek your peace. Seek your strength. And come, Lord God, seeking your face. We don't just want a handout from you. We want a relationship with you. There's your strength, your joy, your peace, your kingdom that we desire. And so as we come together for worship and for prayer, as we remember all that you've given us and done for us, certainly the greatest is a gift of your son Jesus. So we would pray together the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The first activity of the morning's worship then will be uh, continuing with the tradition of lighting of the Advent candle. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, if you think of some of what we looked at the first Sunday of Advent and the different things that the symbols and the meaning can have for us. Yeah. What? It means a time of preparation. It's a time of time of of if you will, if you recall, biblical waiting is an active waiting. Pre- preparing your, your heart. Yeah. And so Advent is a prep time of preparation as we wait for the birth of Jesus. And not that as Christians we shouldn't always be doing that. It's just this season gives us that opportunity to, to look at it a little more closely, a little more deeply, and to continue to, to grow in that. Okay. Yeah, it's, if you had been here when I was had my first one, I told you that Advent meant arrival, and especially the arrival of Jesus Christ into the world. Sorry, that's all right. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, Advent actually is like a time of beginning, and we are using it as preparation for the beginning. All and right. The final chapter of God's plan for salvation. So. Okay, this is, I'm lighting the shepherd candle, and if you were here last Sunday, I was talking about Mary and Joseph arriving into Bethlehem. And how hard it must have been for Mary. And so, um, while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. And she gave birth to her first child, a son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes or a blanket and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the village inn. That same night, some shepherds (coughs) were in the field outside the village, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel appeared among them, and the landscape shone bright with the glory of the Lord. And they were badly frightened. But the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid. I bring you the most joyful news ever announced, and it is for everyone, the Savior, Yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born tonight in Bethlehem. How will you recognize him? You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes or a blanket and lying in a manger. And suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the army of heaven praising God. Glory to God in the highest, they sang, and peace on earth for all those pleasing him. And then when this great army of angels had returned again to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Come on, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this wonderful thing that's happened, which the Lord has told us about. And they ran to the village and found their way to Mary and Joseph. And there it was, the baby lying in a manger. The shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story expressed astonishment. But Mary quietly treasured these things in her heart and often thought about them. Then the shepherds went back again to their field and flocks praising God for the visit of the angels because they and because they had seen the child just as the angel had told them. Now, shepherds were either young kids, as David had been. He, um, he was the youngest of um, eight kids. 
before Samuel came to anoint him king after Saul. But he was out um, with a sheep and had to call him in to anoint him. But that's a different story. Um, and they're either young kids or they are the very poorest of the poor. So that's a, you know, it's not a, a very good um, job. You're out sleeping with the sheep um, long periods of time. And um, you don't bathe. <laughs> There's not that much water around to bathe. So. Um, but anyway, God chose Mary, just a young girl from an obscure little village, and Joseph, to have the Lord's child. And the first people that he told about this marvelous thing was shepherds. You know, that just gives us such uh, 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 that he would come to those people. Certainly, he'll come to us. You know, we're nobody, but that's okay with him. He loves us, and he really, really um, enjoys us. Probably more than some of the other rich people who are too busy to even think about him. So, but anyway, that is the shepherds. And I will be lighting um, the prophet's candle, uh, the Bethlehem candle, and now this is the shepherd's candle. Amen. 
Okay, our first reading then is in the bulletin insert. We'll read the Old Testament uh, side. Jimmy, can you grab one of the mics down there? Oh, yeah. Actually, there are two. Either one. They're all set up. Mark, can have one? Okay. There you go. Okay, and this comes from uh, Jeremiah and Isaiah. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. And the spirit of the Lord, Lord. shall rest upon him, the spirit, spirit of, of wisdom, wisdom and, and understanding, understanding, the spirit of counsel and, and might, the spirit, spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He Thou shalt shall not judge, judge by what, by what his eyes eye see, or decide, decide by, by what, what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. Righteousness, righteousness shall be the girdle of his waist, and faithfulness the girdle of his loins. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have I put, put my, my spirit, spirit upon him, and he will bring, bring forth, forth justice, justice to the, the nations. nations. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will, he will not, not fail, fail or be or discouraged till he has established, established justice, justice in the earth, earth. And, and the, the coastlines coast wait for, for his law. law. Okay, our first music selection is Christmas Song by William Parks. He's taking a little bit of creative liberty with the, yet yeah, I think it's uh, a good message that it brings us. So, all right?
Let us then continue our worship by bringing our tithes and offerings. change. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Let's then all sing the doxology together. God, indeed we do thank you and praise you for all that you have done for us. As we noted before, the greatest, of course, is the gift of your son, Jesus. At the same time, there have been many times in the ups and downs of our lives when we've been aware of your presence and your hand upon the situation. <coughs> as often as we rely on you, you have given us the strength to see it through. As often as we rely with you, the joy we feel is so much deeper than anything that the world can give. And so we come, Lord, grateful and thankful. And our hearts full of awe at who you are. And so we bring these gifts as one way of saying thank you, as one way of giving back, as one way of showing how much we desire to be part of sharing the good news and building your kingdom. So we ask you bless both the giver and the gift. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> <coughs> Yes. Our next music selection then is it's an animated selection. He chose the shepherd.
shepherds working in their field hearing a voice they fell upon their knees Danny believing the news about this baby Christ the Lord bringing peace to all the earth I come to as you know is one of the more important parts of our worship service where as part of the body of Christ we join together to to talk to God a time when we grow closer to God a time where in sharing our concerns and needs with him we are telling him that we trust him that he will work these out for us as we're willing to do our part we trust he will do his it also says we trust the plan that he has for our lives. And we actually grow closer to God in terms of even getting more in sync with him and with that plan. So anything folks would like to share, either a request for God's special attention or praise for what he's been at work in your life. Knowing that you're doing military and 
they're both, you know, more than that. Not semi-automatic or automatic in any way, shape, or form. But, um, you know, being in the household that had weapons in it, um, for cunning and, you know, self-protection sort of purposes, um, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to understand, and I know the conflict that, that goes across the nation. But I think that there's one thing that people may be overlooking just because this event is such a concentrated event as other concentrated events are that gain such attention. But daily conquered children die from cancer and, you know, die from being beat and neglected. And all the horrific ways that you can die, and all the natural ways that you can die. And it seems that we forget to pray for those because we don't care about them. It's not a concentrated event. But it happens daily, and it's just as heartbreaking, you know, <coughs> even though we know that they are going that far. And, you know, it's, it's his design, it's his plan, and we are with him. It's still heartbreaking for the parents. It's still disturbing, you know, to have anything bad you know, happen to a child. <coughs> and it does. It just seems to be the pain now. <coughs> It's interesting you bring that up when I was involved more directly in movement to end hunger. One of the things that we looked at was worldwide uh, <clears throat> 25,000 children died uh, almost on a daily basis from, from hunger related issues or maybe a week, weekly basis. And if <clears throat> that would be the, the equivalent of, of somewhere between 10 and 15 jumbo jets going down at once. If all those went down at once, the world would be up in arms. But the fact that it's scattered, people go, oh, well, that's life. And whether it's a concentrated or it's scattered, it's the same tragedy for the victims. <clears throat> yep. Hmm? of adults, but I can't find her name anywhere. I've Is that Soto? Turning Soto? Soto was the last name. Sonia? Soto, S-O-T-O. Soto. Soto. Mm -hmm. Hold on. I'll find it. Victoria Soto, 27. Yep. That's her. Mm -hmm. um, I have a praise to give, and that's it. Uh, uh, Pastor Ed came to worship with us this morning, so very glad you're here. Uh, <clears throat> and I want to uh, pray that uh, in, in pretty soon in the new year we, we wrap up our vision casting process and we'll be able to begin doing some longer term plans for activities uh, in the new year. And something we'll probably be talking about at each council meeting uh, as 
things move forward. Uh, <clears throat> certainly. Is it is? Yeah. No. Do you have this is coming from I got another one right here. Okay. We'll take a break uh, then in between prayer and and, and put a new one in. Uh, so <clears throat> let's go before anybody else? Steve with us. We're glad Steve's with us. Absolutely. Ah. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Very good. First time they've really had a place they could call their own exactly. for a good while. Yeah. <coughs> yep. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, well, there's, there's a lot of prayer for that going into that. Yep. Yep. I'd say it it could come and do a Sunday morning message on prophecy, but I think we'd be here for six months. <laughs> As I'm learning a lot uh, from Ed, the uh, Sabbath with Koji when I I come for their their Bible study time. Yeah, <laughs> we learn learn together. Yep. <clears throat> okay, let's go before the Lord. Lord God, we come to you today, having sought for forgiveness for times we've gone astray, so that we can be in your presence this morning. We count ourselves especially blessed that, that you are a God who desires to have a personal relationship with indeed with all of your creation especially though with us human beings which is different from any other faith tradition on the face of the earth and we come to because the the truth we find in your word We come because we know that you do what you say you will do. And because we've experienced that in our lives as well. And we come because where else would we turn to in times of sorrow and difficulties as well as times of joy. For having that relationship with you indeed strengthens and deepens all of those experiences. It gives us a purpose beyond just making it through the day. It's even a purpose beyond ourselves for 
not only do we desire to have that relationship with you and that on our faith journey to be walking with you, we desire for so many other people to do so also. Our hearts goes out to the lost, to those who have not had the opportunity to know you, also to those who, because for some reason, don't recognize you or walking in a different direction than would go with you. So, Lord, we come to you for the strength and the sustenance and the forgiveness that only you can provide. And it comes so we can know and grow in that relationship with you. We thank you so much, Lord, for the healing that you've built into us, body, mind, and spirit. The healing, whether it's that which happens naturally, that which happens with the assistance of, of medical personnel and medications, and that which happens by the infusion of your Holy Spirit into us. We also thank you for times when you move other people to be a help to us whether it be the courts or the banks or homeowners or renters or whoever it may be, that we can make steps forward in our lives. Whether situations where we put, have to work at things to put the past behind us or situations where we need opportunities to move forward. We especially think of the condition with Mark for Charity finding a new home, for Danny finding a new home. The healing of Bill is experienced as well as Dave. Thank you when we can here in worship and the joy of you with those who may not be members of this congregation but who are fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. We pray too that you will lead us forward in our vision casting and what you have planned for this congregation in the new year. You will guide us in that planning. You will guide us in that process so not only the two people that you have planned to fill these two empty chairs next to me, that they will be here, but many more as well. For it's not our, our desire to keep you just to ourselves and keep you secret. It's our desire to share with others that they can experience what we have and that they can look forward not to just experiencing you in this life, but be part of your kingdom in the next. So, Lord, we offer these prayers of thanksgiving and hope. We offer the prayers for those who are struggling and having difficulties. Certainly for those in Connecticut at this time yet how many other people as well, children, that daily suffer. We ask, Lord, your touch of your Holy Spirit to be on parents and caregivers and agencies and teachers, that fewer and fewer children would have to undergo those kind of difficulties. Lord God, all these that we offer in your name, 
as well as that which has been unspoken and which you know, that which folks may have shared with you quiet, that you know, we offer them up as well. In the name of your wonderful Son, Jesus. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in their midst. And whatsoever ye shall ask, I will do. Alleluia, alleluia. This is this is on still full. It's not blinking, but if. Is it picking up? Oh, okay. Very good. When they start to get weak, the baby's dead, but they'll cause interference on the microphone because it's extremely sensitive. Okay. Sorry. Shepherds. Yes. The idealized scene is one of just being out in the fields, enjoying the beautiful weather with much relaxation and taking it easy. In truth, though, it was a hard job because the weather could be very cold or very hot or windy or very rainy. They had to be on guard that wild animals did not prey upon the sheep. Yes, at that time, there were still bears and lions in the area of the Middle East. And they had to be on alert because sheep could just wander away. Sheep probably could be the poster child for uh, a definition of short attention spans. In fact, they could wander away much as a basset hound can get lost because he will follow his nose and ultimately has no idea how he got to where he is because he's fallen where the the smells. He's so interested in that that he doesn't look for any of the, uh, uh, I guess, landmarks, doggy landmarks along the way. And he goes, wait a minute, where am I? So they also can get lost. Also in Jesus' time, as Jenny told you, it was considered a lowly application, a lowly occupation. Even though the economy depended on sheep and their products, as well as the need for sacrificial animals, the perfect sacrificial animals. And as she said, they didn't get to wash much. They probably didn't eat well. And they were shunned by many from a higher socioeconomic standard. And probably not just because they had an odor about them. And yes, as we noted last week, Jesus came himself, though, came in the most humblest of manners, being born in a stable. Do you remember when you were born in a barn was a derogatory statement? Well, we can look at it now and say, maybe if somebody says that, you can say thank you. Because that's the same thing that happened with Jesus. And his birth was celebrated that night only by shepherds and angels. He came in the lowliest of states, as we noted last week. In fact, humiliation was in much of his earthly life. Yet he offered, this is interesting, most lowly, offered everyone the deal of a lifetime. You give me your sins and I will give you eternal life greater than you could even imagine. You've heard me say before, that is probably the best deal you will ever hear. Certainly better than any blockbuster deal that Wall Street could put together. Perhaps one reason that he was not born in a palace was because it would have only reinforced the common expectation of a Messiah who would usher in a worldly kingdom. And his message of love and forgiveness would not have been heard 
In fact, even on the night of his birth, those in the inn were probably so engrossed in their eating and drinking and political discussions of the day, some were probably inebriated, they would not even have heard him as well. He could have gone in as this and tried to tell, give them his message, and they would go, who's he? You a king? You an official? You got any power? Oh, you're like those shepherds. But the shepherds, who in most of their lives were struggling to stay alive, and yet also, this is interesting, they were also all the time in reflection of the glory of God, that is his creation. They would have been more observant and attentive to such things, and they were ready to appreciate who Jesus was and is. And as you heard also, Jenny read, that they recognized and praised God and gave him the glory. I think it also tells us that Jesus was no respecter of socioeconomic estate, but was and is more concerned about the status of one's heart and the health and strength of one's faith journey. Lastly, not only did Jesus call himself the good shepherd, the concept of God's being our shepherd was one that went well back into the times of the Old Testaments. So let's see some of what the scriptures had to say. Probably the best known reference to God as our shepherd comes from the opening verse of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Note here that if we have God as our shepherd, then we will not lack in having our needs met. And this is true of any good shepherd, that his job is to make sure his sheep are cared for and have rest and safety as needed without their doing anything more than just being sheep. It's a job of the shepherd and not a privilege the sheep have to earn. If that were true, very few sheep would make it into the shepherd's care. As we note in Israel, uh, Isaiah 53, 6, part of the description of the one who would de deliver Israel. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have everyone turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Or in Psalm 119, 176, I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant, for I do not forget thy commandments. So even though we remember what he's told us to do, we still go astray and need him to seek after us as a shepherd seeks after a lost sheep. And in Isaiah, it even notes that God has provided the atonement for us. I have this in capital and bold letters. Our atonement is not earned. For we know, in, as in Isaiah 43, 1 and 11, Fear not, for I, that is God, I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. Before me no God was formed, nor shall there be any after me. I, I am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. Also Isaiah 53, 8 to 12. He was cut off, from his, he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. Yet he bore the sins of many and made intercession for the transgressors. We would have to be loony to not celebrate the birth of one who's done all of this for us. I would bet you've been to a birthday party for at least one person who hasn't done much for you. If you're going to attend that, shouldn't we attend the one who's done the most for us? The one who cares for us as a shepherd cares for his sheep. I'm sure if sheep could talk, they'd be saying thank you, thank you, thank you over and over daily to the one who does so much for them. Well, we can talk. Then what are we saying to our shepherd? Listen to what God says is his role as our shepherd as laid out in Ezra 34, 6, 11, 13, 15, 16, 23, and 24. My sheep were scattered over all the face of the earth with none to search or seek for them. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep and seek them out. And I rescue them from all places where they have been scattered. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost. I will bring back the strayed. I will bind up the cripple and I will strengthen the weak. And the fat and the strong I will watch over. In some translations say I will destroy. The fat and the strong I will watch over. I will feed them in justice. That's in Space justice, not I'm going to give them injustice. In other words, I will give them justice. I will set over them one shepherd, my servant David. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And Jesus, 
was as the house of David, as it was prophesied that the Messiah would be. And I will be, I the Lord will be their God. This is God acting out of love for us, his creation, his sheep. As we note in Psalm 103, Know the Lord is God, it is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and his sheep of his pasture. In Psalm 80, Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, that's capitalized, so we know who that is, who, thou who leadest Joseph like a flock. Remember what we learned of the attributes of God, those of you who were here three years ago, I keep coming up with this. I need to share that series with you folks because I know a lot of you were not here then. But we can see many of those attributes in these scriptures. Can you see the love he has for us? Once again, when our eyes and ears are open to who he is, how can we not celebrate the birth of Jesus, the beginning of the final work that fulfilled all that God has said he would do? Let us then fast forward to what Jesus himself said about this role of being our shepherd. In John 10, uh, 11, 15, and 27, he said, I am the good shepherd, and I lay down my life for the sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, and no one shall snatch them out of my hand. Now, I've been led to understand that the word snatch there, it means to take them by force. And it's interesting, you know, the, the shepherd, in, in the sheepfold, there would be several flocks in there. Each flock knew the voice of his shepherd. So that shepherd could, could go in and call them, and the only ones that would follow them were the ones of his flock. So when he says, they know my voice, and, and they know me, and they follow me, you see, the people at the time understood what that, what that was. Out of all of the people in the world, my flock will follow me. I will call them, and they will come. Isaiah also noted this about the one to come in, the one to come in chapter 40, verse 11. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those who are with young. And the writer of Hebrews in 1320 even called Jesus the good shepherd of the sheep. After his resurrection, Jesus told Peter to feed my sheep. Peter wrote further on this in 1 Peter 2.25, For you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. You see, he's not just the shepherd for your physical body. He's a shepherd for your soul. And when the chief shepherd is manifested and appears, you will obtain the unfading crown of glory. So when the angels announced Jesus' birth, well, the angel, it, it was one angel was backed up by a choir of angels. It was one angel that actually came first. Announced Jesus' birth to the shepherds. It is not something, is, is it not something, how their hearts took it in and they followed the angel's direction without question. They marveled at what they saw, in fact, you could say that even then there was probably something special about Jesus that showed full and strong, even though he was just a newborn infant. And they returned to their duties as shepherds, witnessing to what they had heard, seen, and experienced, glorifying and praising God. So are we then to be giving presents and hanging decorations just to outdo one another, almost as if we would be more Christian and more celebrating Jesus' birth than anyone else on the block by how many decorations we have or how many elaborate presents we give out. No, like the shepherds, we are to be glorifying and praising God. God who came in the form of an infant in a very lowly state to the lowest of persons. Yet it's interesting, they're ones who could right away recognize him and glorify and praise him for his love and the grace to his creation. We need to be humbly doing the same. As it says in Psalms 96, 1 and 2, O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. We honor him best by a humble Christmas celebration that puts him at the center and it marvels at what he has done for us. He has said that he will be our shepherd and will make sure our needs are met and that we will share in the salvation he has so lovingly provided. We've noted before that that salvation was not given to us in any kind of a grudging manner. 
He lovingly provided. The scriptures say he will rain, found, rain salvation upon you. He will shower you. He will pour it out on you. And during his Advent season, we are focused on the beginning of God's completing his promise and the prophecy of his plan for salvation. Have you taken the time this Advent season to just quietly thank God and praise him for his grace and his glory, for the humble birth, the life of servant leadership that Jesus led, his suffering and death that cleanses us from sin, and the resurrection that shows that he was who he said he was, and which gives us solid assurance of the promise of eternal life with him? Let us enjoy this season of what God has done for us, though we did not deserve one iota of what he did. For those of you who don't know, iota means a teeny speck. It's a Greek word. Let us enjoy being the sheep of his pasture. Let there be no pride in our celebration, just open hearts and minds to learn and experience more of the peace and joy we can have in him. Remember, too, that he is our prophet, priest, and king, who came to us as a stable boy, and yet whose loving actions changed everything. This one who was born in the lowliest of estates, who was first attended to by the lowliest of the low, actually completed what was all the prophecy for our salvation. He who was the lowest divided history. We measure time by his birth. We don't measure time by what Julius Caesar did or what Alexander the Great did. Or Genghis Khan, who perhaps had the biggest empire of all at one point. And let us invite others to share in this celebration in this way as we remember this Sunday how he first came first to the lowly shepherds, how they praised and glorified him. They did not praise and glorify the outside of their houses and yards or the presence that they shared with others. They praised and glorified God and the presence that they shared with others was what they had heard and seen and experienced when they had been in the presence of the Lord at the time he came to complete the acts for our salvation. That's the present, folks. And they shared that. And people marveled at it. What presence will you give to others that will praise and glorify God? What will you accept in your heart of what he has done for you, which has already glorified him, even it has saved your soul? Let us pray. Oh Lord God, how much we, get, we miss when we get caught up in all the trappings of celebrating the Christmas season and at times forget that it is all about you and not about us. Lord God, help us to be humble as the shepherds when they came to honor their great shepherd. Help us to recognize that we are celebrating because you keep your word and because you sent your son to live on earth as a human to die so all humans who trust and believe in you can be saved to eternal life with you. Lord God, help our celebration be one that is humble and so open to the coming of your Holy Spirit that we will in simple celebration find a deeper and more complete meaning to this time of year than ever before. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. And indeed, do you be the glory for all that you've done for us. As we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Any thoughts, questions, or particular things that hit your heart you want to share? Yeah, I mean from the message. From the message. Hmm? The one thing that I forgot to say while I was up there is that, you know, the shepherds left their sheep and they went to the village and left them all by themselves. If anything had happened to those sheep, they'd have been in trouble. They would have been <clears throat> in heap of trouble. Yeah, because the, the sheep were their responsibility. Absolutely. So um, I just I thank God that um, he kept the sheep <laughs> safe while the shepherds yes. went to the village. Well.
Absolutely. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's just okay. Just a little. No, that's really Okay, very good. Leave your sheep behind. Go around the manger. See my son. Don't worry about the sheep. There's some sheep over here. You wonder if any any uh, uh, wolf or, or lion ran into a uh, some kind of a force field there. Was it? Yeah. 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 Thank you for, uh, you're, more, you're reflecting on the shepherds today and uh, their lowly socioeconomic position in their day. Yeah. And yet um, God chose them to be witnesses of one of the most amazing events ever in the history mm-hmm. of mankind. He chose, first he chose the shepherds and then he chose the magi later to come and see him and to visit him later. And, uh, can you imagine those people that we'll meet someday in the kingdom who were chosen to be those witnesses? What a high privilege it was. And the character that they had to have to be chosen. There was something special in those shepherds mm-hmm. that God chose them to be the witnesses as there was in Mary, the her perfection, and mm-hmm. Joseph. Yep. And something special about their character and their heart that they got to have that high privilege of being the witnesses of the greatest event in history. Yep. So when you say, God, why do you choose me to do that? He prays, well, why not? Yeah. You know, if the shepherds were good for that, and Mary was good for that, and, and even you know, he chose the Magi to, 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 to do what he wanted, not to do what they wanted. And they were actually the first ones, as in, in the Epiphany we'll talk about, they were the first representatives of worldly powers that came and bowed their knee before, before him. Yeah, and and so well, why not? There's because there are certain things each one of us can do that God calls us to, and just like the shepherds, I mean, he he didn't say, okay, now go out and 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 preach all this intellectual intellectual theological stuff to the masses. He just you know they just went back and witnessed to the people that they knew and that they met, and they witnessed to what they knew. And sometimes that's all God wants us to 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 do is just to you know, those people around us, and they're liable. You know, people who know us are liable to believe us more than somebody who doesn't. Particularly when I have a message to bring that sounds fantastic. I mean, can you imagine somebody who's full of himself or herself or or their power or their status? And you come to them and say, I just saw the angels. And he said, go watch this baby. And it's the Messiah. And we went and he was there. And it was, you know, that person goes, get away from me. You know, you're crazy. How stupid can you be? And I think that's partly, too, that, those, that their hearts and minds would be open to that. And then in, in, in the kind of wet witnesses that they were. You know, we remember them to this day in the scripture. So... <clears throat> Okay. Our final music selection then is Rise Up Shepherds and Follow by the King's Singers. I'll scoot back. There you go. Follow, follow Rise up shepherd and follow Follow the star of Bethlehem, rise up shepherd and follow. Follow, follow, rise up shepherd and follow. Follow the star of Bethlehem, rise up shepherd and follow. There's a star in the east on Christmas morn, rise up shepherd and follow. sheep and leave your lambs. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Leave your ewes and leave your rams. Rise
Now indeed may he who is indeed our good shepherd as you open your hearts more and more to him may he lead you may he care for you may you learn to trust more and more in him each day. Amen. <clears throat> 